tell you, it's a bit stressful being Irish at the moment. Um, it's always stressful being Irish, but uh, I'm just thinking about what's going on in America. Not Donald Trump. He's Scotland's problem, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> But if you look at the people who are around Donald Trump, the people who are keeping him in power, if you listen to their names, they all have something in common. There's a Kelly there, there's a Flynn, there's one called Bill O'Reilly, there's a guy on Fox News, his name is Sean Hannity. They're all Irish, these racists. And <laughs> It's very upsetting because Irish people, we're used to going around the world and getting, you know, getting a good reaction, being offered good drugs from people, and <laughs> I guess we'd like to keep that going. Um, but I think if they came to Ireland now, uh, these, these Republicans, they wouldn't like it at all because Ireland's gone in a bit of a different direction to America. We've got an openly gay, mixed-race Prime Minister. We've just legalised abortion, and we're going to go fossil fuel free by 2020. If Ireland gets any more progressive, you're going to see one of us leaving the house without a jacket on. <laughs> this is where we are. Yeah. So this is my plan, how I plan to show Irish Americans who are in that, in that train of thought that we're not on board with their shit. So just say I see Sean Hannity coming up the road, you know, and he's looking for his grandmother's shack. I'd be like, that place? No, no, we knocked that down years ago, Sean. We've built a transgender vegan research centre in its place. <laughs> yeah. With a deck out the back that faces Mecca. <laughs> And you know the best part? Paid for by the Mexican government as well. <laughs> it's not all bad, though. It's, I think it's a mistake to focus too much on these people because there's some great stuff going on in the world. One of the things I'm really enjoying at the moment are the hand dryers that are out lately. I think they're excellent. Yeah, I am. I'm going to talk about hand dryers for a bit. Uh, I think they're really good. I think we could look back at this time, we might not even remember Trump or Brexit. We'll say it was a golden era for hand dryers, yeah? <laughs> Future generations will say, how did it take them so long to realise that more air was the solution? What was that? Because <laughs> we had the old ones for years. They were desperate. You know, the only good thing about the old ones was you could turn the nozzle up to face you and pretend to be Bonnie Tyler for a few seconds. That was all. <laughs> and then the new ones came on stream and everything changed. I really love the Dyson Airblade. It's a fantastic piece of kit. Yeah. For loads of reasons. First one, it has cut the time of drying our hands from 47 seconds down to just 10 seconds. That is a 77% performance improvement. I don't know of any other industry that's making gains of that size. <laughs> And for that reason, I'm not even going to cheapen it with a joke, right? <laughs> the real reason I love the Dyson Airblade, though, is that there's a moment now when you're drying your hands, when you get to watch your own flesh <laughs> being blown around your bones, and you suddenly become aware of how fragile life actually is. <laughs> I've been entertaining. Thank you so much. Good night.